This is the story of one of nature's choicest jewels. This is the story of the Switzerland of America, the story of Jim Bridger, the story of the pioneers of the Intermountain West, of man and nature working and prospering hand in hand, of progress, of relaxation. The song of the breeze and the murmuring of crystal clear streams winding through this lush land, hard by the western front of the lofty Rockies. Wandering bands of Indians heard the song, but white men didn't hear the restful tune until the summer of 1824. It was Jim Bridger, dean of the Western Scouts and Trappers, who had the privilege of first coming under the spell of Cache Valley. Following the trail of the furs, Jim Bridger and his mules came through an awe-inspiring canyon cut through the Wasatch Mountains and out into the valley. The luxuriant vegetation, the lush meadows, the borders of forest land, the quick flowing streams, all of these caught Bridger's eyes. But it was the water that most attracted Jim Bridger. Sipping deeply from a quiet river bend pool, this pioneer explorer tasted of the West's most precious liquid. He found then, as thousands have since, that Cache Valley has a generous water supply. Bridger his furs in a stream bank cave, a cache, he called it. The valley he discovered has since taken this name because so aptly it conveys the meaning of hidden treasure. The furs long ago have gone to market, but the real treasure hidden in the valley, that of a bountiful life, is still being banked by those who dwell in Cache Valley. Civilization was not far behind the early explorers. The Mormon pioneers settled in Cache Valley in 1856, less than a decade after their arrival in Utah. From their modest beginning has sprung a community gently filling the valley from Wellsville on the south through Preston on the north. Not filled to choking capacity like the teeming cities of metropolitan America, but filled with the farms, the homes, the schools, the churches, and the businesses that make for life in a relaxed, more enjoyable way. There are cities too, modern cities, but in them the pace is more relaxed, more friendly, more generous, more livable. The city streets in Cache Valley are broad. Traffic moves at an easy pace. Whether it's Saturday when the folks from miles around come to town to shop and visit, or just any day of the week, it's easy to get around both for natives of the valley and for the visitors that come to northern Utah in increasing numbers every year. Farms are still the key to the life and economy of Cache Valley. Thanks to the endowment by nature of water aplenty and rich soil left by the recession of prehistoric Lake Bonneville, the products of the land in this alpine-like valley are many and varied. Corn and peas are only minutes old when they roll in canning plants for processing and shipment to the kitchen of hungry America. Orchards, blossom bathed in the spring, are heavy with fruit each fall, fruit that follows the row crops into the cannery. Rating high among crops in Cache Valley, both on the valley floor and in the circling foothills, is wheat. Wheat rides high from planting time on through the winter when generous snows keep the bursting kennels moist and the sprouts green. On through the spring when the wind-blown rain clouds sprinkle their life-giving moisture on the field. On to fall when the heads swing tall and heavy in the gentle breeze. Then comes the harvest and the crop is in. It all adds up to health, wealth, and happiness, Cash Valley style. Before the name of Cache Valley, or Jim Bridger's Fur Cache, was applied, early settlers called this Grass Valley because the high annual rainfall kept its floor green all summer. Alfalfa hay now is the major crop grown on the field. Hay that the year round feeds Cache Valley's 15,000 cows, who are the star performers in one of the nation's most dramatic dairy shows. The ingenious farmers and mechanics have given nature an assist in her production. 
Loading baled hay in the fields long was a back-breaking, time-consuming task. Then native ideas of making the job easier were put together. And from a Cache Valley shop emerged a new kind of hay loader that picks the bales gently from the fields and drops them expertly into the waiting wagon. Many other devices, equally ingenious and important, have been born in this area and brought into production in the growing factories of northern Utah. It's no wonder that the average family income in Cache Valley is more than $5,000 a year, one of the highest per capita income rates in the nation. Tranquility and prosperity. Pretty words, yes, but well fitted to this mountain-skirted agricultural land. It is from these mountains that the water flows in a never-ending stream. Water for the farmlands, water for the factories, water for the city folks, and water for the sportsmen. Thousands of fishermen each summer try their luck along such waterways as Logan River and Blacksmith Fork. Logan River has produced the world's record German brown trout, a 36-pounder. A man or woman with a rod and reel would shout with joy at one particular stretch of a Wasatch mountain stream. This is not a fishing paradise, but a farm of a new variety. From the cool, cool water come trout to grace the tables of America. The Finney Beauties from Cache Valley are the number one choice as the featured item on the menu of dining cars of several of the nation's largest railroads. The plush, year-round resort of Sun Valley is only 250 miles from Cache Valley on the shortest, most scenic route to the northwest. And Sun Valley obtains the trout for its guests from northern Utah. Make you hungry to watch them? Come on out on opening day and see what you can do in other open rivers, creeks, and lakes. The streams of water are not the only streams to which residents of Cache Valley point with pride. The stream of milk from 15,000 cows is a big one and the source of much of the valley's prosperity. Utah has long been well in front in processing of milk. Under most exacting standards of sanitation, the milk is handled quickly and safely. The modern dairy practices used by the farmers producing milk for the processing plant owe much of their success to the Utah State Extension Service. The Extension Service has its headquarters right in Cache Valley on the campus of Utah State College in Logan. And where is the world's largest processed Swiss cheese factory? Not in Switzerland, but in Cache Valley, Utah, just a few miles from the Idaho state line. The Cache Valley Dairy Association has more than a thousand members. Some of their milk is handled and distributed fresh, but a large portion goes through the curding vats, the presses, and finally into the wheel storage room, where the 200 pound discs are cured before shipment all over the world. Utah also is the original home in America of converting beets into sugar. Many of the farms of northern Utah grow beets that are processed into mountains of sugar. Byproducts like pulp and tops go back to the farms as livestock feed. The dependable yearly rainfall is a major factor not only for irrigated crops like beets, but also for so-called farm grain crops. Wheat from acre after acre of non-irrigated land on the foothills goes into the Cache Valley grain mills for conversion into flour and cereal. The dairy farmers, in their continuing efforts to improve their herds, have joined in forming the Cache Valley Breeding Association. The association headquarters at Hyde Park aids more than 3,000 members in five intermountain states. More than 30,000 cows annually are bred through the artificial insemination method of the group. Poultry production in Cache Valley, with the emphasis on eggs and turkeys, provides an income of some $2 million a year. An applewood smoked turkey produced in Cache Valley is in constant demand from gourmets in all parts of the nation. 
But all the attention is not confined to feeding hungry people with the Valley's watering products. Clothing long has been a major business, and its importance is increasing. Dress factories employ scores of skilled workers, particularly women, in cutting cloth and sewing fine seams. Outerwear, dresses, underclothing, all are proud to head for market, boasting a label made in Cache Valley. Some of the clothing is not only fashioned, but grown right in the Intermountain West. From the long fleeces of mountain-raised sheep comes the wool that goes through an intricate spinning process that is made into cloth. In many cases, the machines used to handle the long woolen fibers were, like the hay loaders of the farm, devised and designed right in the Utah plants, where they now operate in a fascinating, eye-catching way. Utah State College, an imposing institution on a hilltop campus overlooking Logan, is one of the nation's seven great land-grant colleges dedicated to improving the area it serves. In addition to its widely known courses in agricultural sciences, Utah State offers well-balanced classes in arts and sciences, commerce, education, engineering, home economics, and management of forests, range, and wildlife. Aggie basketball, football, and baseball teams rate high in Skyline Conference competition, and graduates of its reserve officer training units have won an outstanding reputation. As the valley grows, so do its schools, noted for their progress and understanding in the all-important task of molding young manhood and young womanhood into the citizenry of tomorrow. Plant improvements are being made constantly to provide new educational homes for the ever-increasing number of boys and girls, long one of Utah's best crops. Cash Valley also boasts of church membership, far over the national average. The background is naturally one closely connected with the Latter-day Saints or Mormon Church, but other denominations are well represented with imposing structures and loyal congregations. Combined with the college, the churches contribute greatly to the culture of the valley. LDS affairs center around the Logan Temple with its flowered setting and rich historical background. Built by volunteer labor from native stone and wood at a cost of $600,000, the massive structure was planned by Brigham Young and dedicated in 1884. The congregation of the Cache Valley churches comes from homes small and large, from farm homes and city homes, some old, most of them new. Green-thumbed practitioners of the fine art of landscaping abound in this lush area. The pride of their home ownership is well evidenced in the neat, well-tailored appearance of the dwelling places from one end of the valley to the other. Logan Country Club, whose perfectly maintained golf course, is rated by Linksman as one of the sportiest in the West. The winding fairways attract golfers from all parts of Utah. And many of the tourists who discover the beauty of Cash Valley stop for a round over the course or a visit in the friendly atmosphere of the clubhouse. For those who prefer their recreation on horseback, well, this is the place. Scores of Cache Valley residents own their own horses and participate in mountain trips with fellow members of riding clubs. The thrill of a gallop along a tree-lined Wasatch mountain trail is one long to be remembered. Frequently, the goal is a shaded dale where a barbecue has been prepared by advanced riders and is awaiting the horsemen when they arrive for a pause that more than refreshes. By horseback, by car, or by foot trail, many of the mountain trips lead to the variety of scenic lakes 
nestled in the Wasatches above Jim Bridger's Valley. Children never lack things to do in Cache Valley, things that less fortunate city-bound youngsters can seldom relish, like an Easter egg roll on a spacious city square. The eggs, of course, come from the valley's own poultry. In the spring, as the fishing season opens, a highlight of the life of the Cache Valley boys and girls is the annual Lions Club Fish Scramble. You have to be young and fast to keep up with the gang as the excited kids chase their would-be catch through the waters of a Logan City pond. The scramble is sponsored by the 14 Lions Clubs of Cache Valley. This, incidentally, is the largest concentration of Lions Clubs in any single rural area in the nation. Their members constantly take the lead in civic improvement and in sponsoring ways of bettering their communities. The film you are now seeing, sponsored by the Associated Lions Clubs of Cache Valley, is typical of their many projects. The Lions' work goes on the year round, just like the activity of the Cache Valley residents. The pond that in spring was the site of the fish scramble is transformed by Mother Nature into a spacious skating rink when winter comes. Bare feet are now warmly covered with thick socks and skating shoes, and the song of the blades rings out loud and long. Winter brings fun for the whole family in Cache Valley, like a trip up Blacksmith Fork to Hardware Ranch. around the ranch in a real old-fashioned sleigh. But Hardware Ranch is no ordinary ranch. Its crop, elk. These majestic creatures with their long antlers are typical of the big game that calls the Wasatch Mountains home. Hardware Ranch elk are well protected from hunters. However, in the open country around, there are thousands of deer and elk and game birds that may be taken in season. An occasional moose or bear may be seen by the hunters, but they are rare. The winter sports are far from being confined to sleigh riding. A favorite of western skiers is Beaver Basin, a snow-clad wonderland high up Logan Canyon just west of the summit that divides Cache Valley from Bear Lake Valley. Two ropes make the job of getting back up the hill easy. Then comes the exhilarating ride back down the slope with the snow streaming high behind. tranquility of the winter scene is never to be forgotten. The feeling of peace that comes with the quietness of a blanket of fresh snow typifies the general spirit of life here in the western Rockies. There's no place in America where life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness has a greater guarantee. That's why the Associated Lions Clubs of Cache Valley are proud and grateful to present this, the Cache Valley Story. <laughs>